Hi there, it's Mr Hegarty here. I was asked by one of my students, Yamina, to briefly recap sequences. So here's a very, very brief video on sequences and some of the questions you could be asked on them. What's a sequence? A sequence is a list of numbers that follows a certain pattern. So say we have the following sequence. Say we have the sequence 7, 13, 19, 25, and it went on. The first thing we could be asked is to, is to say the rule of the sequence. Now you can see, hopefully, that the sequence is going up in 6 each time. So the rule would simply be add 6 each time. So that's the first thing we could be asked. The next thing we could be asked is to continue the sequence for the next two or three terms. So clearly we just add 6, 31, add 6 again would be 37, and add 6 again would be equal to 43. So that's the next thing we could be asked. Now, on top of that, we could be asked something called the nth term. We might be asked what's the nth term of the sequence. Okay, now, how do you work out the nth term? The sequence is going up in sixes. The other list of numbers, the times tables list of numbers, you know that goes up in six, is the six times tables. Namely 6, 12, 18, 24, 30 and 36. Okay, so you would write the six times tables above your sequence. What's the nth term of the six times tables? Well, it's 6n. Why is that? because the first one 6 times 1, the next one 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, 6 times 5, 6 times 6. So in general, it's 6 multiplied by a number. How does our sequence relate to the 6 times tables? Well, it's the same as it, except for 1's been added. So it's 6n plus 1. So the nth term of the sequence is 6n plus 1. And that could be a question we could be asked. Okay, so what? What do you do with the nth term? Well, there are two things you could do. You may be asked, what is the 13th term of the sequence? And you can use your nth term to do that for you. All you'd have to do is replace this n by 13. So 6 multiplied by 13, add 1, would tell you what the uh, 13th term of the sequence is. Now, 6 multiplied by 13 is equal to 78, and 78 add 1 would be 79. So that is the, uh, the 13th term, 79. So that's why the nth term is really helpful. It can help you work out the, a high term. For example, and one more, the 100th term would be equal to 6 multiplied by 100, add 1, which is equal to 601. Simple as that. And that saves you a hell of a lot of time from counting up in sixes. The last thing that the nth term could do is you could check whether a number was actually in the sequence. So suppose we were asked uh, whether 90, uh, suppose we were asked something like, is 91 in the sequence and is 95 in the sequence? Check. Well, we could keep adding sixes and see if those two numbers come up. Or we could say, well, if it was in the sequence, we know we would be able to find an n such that 6n plus 1 would be equal to 91. And we could subtract one off both sides, so that 6n would therefore have to be equal to 90. And dividing by 6, that would tell us, well, it would tell us that n would have to be equal to 15. So actually, 91 is in the sequence, it's the 15th term. Okay, so having found an n that's a whole number, we know it's that term. On the other hand, 95, if we let 6n plus 1 is equal to 90. 5, subtract 1 off both sides, 6n would be equal to 94, and divide by 6, n would therefore be a decimal. If you work out um, 94 divided by 6, you get a decimal. Therefore, n, which had to be a whole number to be a term in the sequence, uh, cannot be true. So, it, so 95 is not in our sequence. And that's it for the nth term. So, uh, what I'd uh, like to do, I'm going to write, so here's an... Here is another sequence. Suppose we had the sequence, I don't know, 9, 14, 19, 24. First thing I'd like to ask you is the rule. What's the rule? Second thing I'd like to ask you are the next two terms. 
The third thing I'd like you to work out is the nth term. The fourth thing I'd like you to do is using the nth term, tell me what the 20th term is. And the fifth thing I'd like you to do is tell me whether, I don't know, um, tell me whether A, uh, 99, and B, uh, 106, is in the sequence. So I'm going to pause for 10 seconds, you pause the video, try that, and then I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so what's the rule? The rule clearly is add 5 each time. So add 5 each time. What's the next two terms then? Well, therefore the next one is 29, and the one after that would be 34. So we've done that. The nth term, well, this is going up in 5, so we write the 5 times tables, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30, and the nth term of that is 5n. Now our sequence is 4 uh, bigger, so the nth term is 5n add 4. Okay, so the nth term is 5n add 4. We could use that to work out the 20th term, we'd just do 5 multiplied by 20 add 4, which would be equal to 104. And we check if 99 is in there, well we could let 5n plus 4 equal 99 and see if we can find a whole number n. Therefore 5n subtracting 4 would be equal to 95. And indeed, you can find an n, that's true for n would be equal to 19. So yes it is, is the answer. And what about 106? Well you'd let 5n plus 4 equal 106. Subtract 4 off both sides, 5n would be equal to 102. And if you do 102 divided by 5, n would be equal to 20.4, uh, which is not a whole number, so therefore no. And that's the nth term of sequences done for you in a very short space of time. Now, bear in mind this video, I did it very quickly and I've used my finger on the iPad to do it, so I hope it's neat enough for you to read and I hope it's useful for you to get a, a basic introduction. A, a better, more uh, uh, fully full video will be following on the website hegartymaths.com. Thanks for watching.